Compression is meant to reduce the amount of volume required to contain something. Remember that expression, you can't get something for nothing, or nothing in life is free. That's similar to compression, just like this man who has chosen to wear a very tight-fitting compression shirt to manage his volume. IBM SVC is able to fit more bits into a smaller space with compression. The cost is that there is CPU overhead. On the newer hardware models, this is most often not an issue. But I'm going to show you an example where the cost outweighed the benefit. In the next part of the presentation, I'm going to show you the SVC node dashboard. The node dashboard identifies the key availability risk indicators for the systems running Spectrum Virtualized Software, and it's based upon the SVC node metrics. Each row in the dashboard represents a different system, and the columns represent different risk indicators. The rating is just a sim simply a way to measure the intensity of the risk, with zero being no risk and three indicating significant risk. And by hovering over each bubble in the UI, you can see the ratings and the tooltips for each metrics. In this SVC node dashboard, you can see that the SVC001 is experiencing significant issues, as indicated by the big red dots. Now we want to get more detail, so we're going to drill down to the individual nodes associated with SVC001, and I'll show this in the next chart. We can see that several nodes have risks in node read response time, node utilization, node write response time, and node fast write bypasses. Let's take a look at the node utilization and see which node has the highest utilization. With the node utilization chart in view, you can see the line associated with node 3 is higher than any of the others. It has a rating of 2.27. Node 4, which is a partner node for node 3, also had high node utilization, but for now we're just going to focus on node 3. We really want to know what is driving the load on node 3, so we're going to take a look at the node throughput. The throughput for each node within SVC001 is displayed. Now we want to see what volumes are associated with Node 3, so we simply drill down to Node 3's preferred volumes. The volumes with the most throughput are listed first in the legend. We need to understand if these volumes are compressed. The reason we want to know if these are compressed volumes is because they're very, very busy, and busy volumes are not good candidates for compression. Further investigation detected these volumes were compressed volumes, and we migrated these volumes to other volumes that were not compressed. Let's take a look at how removing the busy compressed volumes affected the performance of Node 3 in terms of both CPU utilization and overall front end response time. The chart on the left is the node utilization prior to the removal of the highly active compressed volumes. The chart on the right is for the period after the compressed volumes have been removed. The node utilization for Node 3 is 24.28% lower on average without the active compressed volumes than it was with them. Now let's take a look to see if this improved the front end read response time. This chart shows the front end read response time for node 3. The chart on the left is for the period when the active compressed volumes resided on node 3, and the chart on the right shows a period after the volumes had been removed. The response time improved by 19 0.14% with an absolute change of 0.67 milliseconds. 0.67 milliseconds may not seem like a big number, but in performance tuning, any time you can get a 20% improvement in response time with minimal effort, it should be considered a victory. In this case, we found that compression was just not worth the space that was saved. If you have a similar situation with high node utilization, what you want to do is expand, examine the busy volumes on the nodes and confirm if they are compressed. If those really active volumes are compressed, then they may not be the best candidate for compression.